myself, you know what? I tried. You and I said, tried, I yeah. tried, you know, so whatever happens, happens. And everything, it just, everything worked in my favor. We got the lights, you know, and then I remember walking on the first day mm -hmm. at this location that we got, uh, this place called Film London. And mm -hmm. I also want to, you know, thank them as well. Yes. Because they, they were, they were a place that encouraged young filmmakers and filmmakers in London mm -hmm. to make their films. They help you know, different filmmakers. I mean, in this particular case, they helped me with uh, the location. Right. They gave me the location, the, mm. the scenes. Um, so we, you know, it, it was a great location. So, you know, I remember coming there the first day I said, okay, here goes nothing. Here goes nothing. I'm going to try. I don't know <laughs> I'm what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. I know I'm doing something. Yeah. You know, my wife is proud of me, and so yeah. is it my daughter. Let me see how far I can get before we go, hey, we don't know what we're doing. Did sometimes did your team look at you and think, what is he doing? Did you know, did they no, I him? gave everybody their yeah. own uh, creative expression. Everybody yeah. was able to, you know, add their little uh, two cents here. Yeah. you know, make suggestions, because I'm not the type of director that I, I don't want to hear nothing. Mm. And how, how were you able to <clears throat> cast, you know, for it with, that, with a very small budget? You know? um, mm. Well, you know, on, on a low-budget film, mm -hmm. you always... I mean, some films, I mean, it's, it's sad to say, some short films, mm -hmm. you sometimes don't get paid, you right. know. Yeah. But I, I negotiated a small fee yeah. to my actors and, and yeah. my lead actress yeah. and everything, mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, they understood that's, that's what a short film is, and, and they like the script. They really like the script. Yeah. Anyone and famous? Anyone famous? Uh, yeah. You know, funny enough, I yeah. did get a few people uh, sending their pictures for auditions, you know. I don't really want to say who they were, but... You can tell me. They're I mean... Not, they're not listening. You can tell me. No, there was some... <laughs> some I mean, I, I got a few singers, and I said, yeah. I said wait and a second. And they're famous. Yeah, they've... they've oh, go on. They were me. accomplished. <laughs> yeah. You know, and to be honest... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This, this particular uh, person, yeah. she's a singer, but I, I can't really remember her name, honestly, so I'm sorry. Oh, you just don't I cannot to remember her name, okay. but she was... I'm going to ask them to turn the camera off, and you can tell me. <laughs> I'll t I'll, I might remember later, you know? <laughs> oh, I'll yeah. tell you later. But I, yeah, I did get yeah. some people mm -hmm. send me their, their pictures, and I said, I said to myself, now, why would they want to do why this? This is a this? short I film. Maybe the, I think the script was very interesting. The I mean, script, the monologue is quite, you know. No, the monologue is, film, so. I mean, yeah. at the end, you know, when we finished the project and mm -hmm. I took, uh, you know, the, the film, mm -hmm. my hard drive back to New York, you know, mm -hmm. with my, my editor, mm -hmm. I, you know, I asked them, I said, uh, what should we call the film? He said, oh, that's simple. Yeah. The, monologue. the monologue. I mean, yeah. that's the only thing you, you know you remember in the film, and that's the thing that just uh, you know moves the audience because yeah. mm -hmm. it's something that you know I I grew up with some some kids, and this is what they went through. So I I said, you know what, let me make a film, yeah. and and give them homage because yes. you know they were friends of mine mm -hmm. and they were affected by this situation, right. and it's something so close to me that mm -hmm. you know you you when you as an artist you know. Everybody wants to do, everybody wants to express themselves. Right. The only way you can express yourself thoroughly is if what you're saying is something that you believe in. Absolutely. So if you're yeah. saying something that really you don't believe in, it, it's, the audience is not going to really, they're not going to feel the pain if there is any pain or mm -hmm. they're not going to feel the joy yeah. if you don't. So, so um, what did you learn from producing the monologue I learned that you know what you need a lot more money to do a short <laughs> film number one you know that's and always the top yes mm -hmm. when you do a short film you have to have a, a, a big producer because I, I learned that a producer is the person that pays for pretty much for everything you just right. call him and go hey you know you Bob this, Bill whatever his this. name yes. is uh -huh. I need some gels on set and right. they deliver them like pizza yeah you know, but we went through a conflict uh, when, in particular, when we were shooting the actual monologue mm -hmm. scene, the, the monologue slam scene, right. where one of the gels burned. And mm -hmm. my cinematographer said, he, he told me, he said, we have uh, two gels. I said, okay, that's great. Keep them gel gelled. Keep I didn't know what he was talking about because right. at the same time, you know, 
I was doing the monologue. I'm the actor and the director and, the director. and you know, yes. the delivery guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm everybody. Uh -huh. So he said, yeah, we're down to one and a half gels. I said, what are you talking about? Uh -huh. He said, this gel has a hole in it because it burned. Uh -huh. I said, well, let's shoot it however. however with the yes. la the, you know, and it's funny enough, everything came out perfect. Right. It was perfect. The lighting was just, you know, one side was a little dark and one side was was blue and it was just like wow how do you get that great great lighting yeah and it's funny enough um you just get a gel that burns <laughs> so i suppose yeah. um the second thing you learned was don't panic no no <laughs> i never will be fine i never panicked throughout yeah. the, the whole shoot uh, -huh. uh because you know i i believe that sometimes when things are meant to be they're meant to be Absolutely. and you got to believe in what you know what you want to achieve mm -hmm. and you got to keep moving forward doesn't matter if, if the lights burn. If the lights burn, then you know what? We'll you light candles. I was determined to it. find a way, you know? If I found a way to produce, get all the money for this film, get the camera, get the crew, get all the actors, all the locations, mm -hmm. and transportation, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna let one little light shut my production down. So I mean, um, are you writing any, anything at the moment? Uh, Right now, we, we've talked to a few people who are actually interested in trying to make my short into a feature film. Mm -hmm. You know, but I know, you know, you can't get ahead of yourself. You can't rush things. Right. You know, I'm looking for, you know, a great writer to collaborate with. Right. Where we're going to sit down and, you know, just recreate a masterpiece. Anytime and, soon? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I was approached at this film festival and this, this young... This young kid, I mean, he's not that. He's like 23 or something. Yeah. He sent me a clip that same night of a short film that he did. And the footage that he had, you know, that, uh, you know the cameras that he was using. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I said, wow. I said, that, that camera looks a little better than mine. It looks a lot better than mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I emailed him back and I said, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to shoot the feature, but you know, we're gonna need some money. You know, you can't money. shoot a movie with no money. Because you've already, you've already learned your first lesson. Yeah, you need money. And yes. he, he told me, he said, I have my, uh, my camera guy, yes. I have my editor, I have, you know, my crew, mm -hmm. you know, and they're ready to go when you are. Yes. I said, well, that's, that's good to know, you know, but you gotta give me some time because I still gotta get a little bit of money. Uh -huh. I mean, even if we don't use the money for the editing or you know, to pay the camera crew. Right. We still need money for you some croissants and some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You need to eat. Exactly. And you need to get back home. <laughs> exactly. Transportation. Oh. Wow, fantastic. Hey, Gabriel, I'm going to get a bit personal with you. Do you mind? No, I'm not, not going at all. to make you cry or anything like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a bit about, you know, yourself, your family. Are they based in the UK or in the US? Uh, most, most of my family, well, all of my family, besides my, my wife and my, my brothers, my sister-in-law, yeah. are, are in America. Okay. You know, my mom, my dad, and my uh, five other brothers. So it's a big family. Oh, that's a big, massive family. Yeah, it's big. But you, you do get back to see them? I occasionally, mm -hmm. I, you know, fly down for mm -hmm. maybe uh, two or three weeks. Is that when you're on your way to Hollywood? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when I'm on my way to Hollywood. Uh, no, I actually... Most of my, uh, my, my business uh, ventures take place in New York because, mm -hmm. you know, I was, pretty much, I was born in New York, uh, brought up in Boston, which is really a reflection of England anyway. So <laughs> that's why I, I, I really don't miss home because but there's a Boston in London. There's also a Cambridge here. There's Good. a Cambridge in, in America as well, well where I'm Lon from. London is fantastic. As it is. So it's, it's just like a, a mirrored reflection of my hometown in America which is Boston, Mass. But why do you think that in the US people tend to go and try and do their own projects? Because uh, it, it's, I've met a lot of people here in, in the United Kingdom. I've met actors, uh, filmmakers. In America, there's, uh, you know, we know that we need to do our own things. Over here, everyone so we're is not, a little bit... So over here, we're not ambitious people, now. No, it's not is even... fair? It's not even ambitious. I think people are just waiting for somebody like, you know, I know people that just go like, yeah, well, talk to my agent, talk to my agent. Like, listen, man, I'm just inviting you for a drink. I got to talk to the agent for that. Yes. It's like some people just take it way too serious. And maybe it might be uh, fear. It could mm -hmm. be laziness. I mean, but just because uh -huh. I have an agent doesn't mean I'm not going to go make a film. Because you know what? Like they say, yeah. if you got one agent, 
You can always get a better agent, you know? Actually, come to think of it, I think a lot of people miss opportunities because of that. You know, the, the fact that you got to talk to, talk you know, to the agent. The only talking I, I do... The it, that's the way it is here in the UK, I suppose. Yeah. But it, that system is not... Uh, it's, it's not great. I mean, even in America, there's, there's, there's actors, I mean, accomplished actors, mm -hmm. that will go do an independent film. Mm -hmm. Look, there was a film called Monsters Ball that Halle Berry did, and it was an independent film with Billy Bob Thornton. Yes. And she got an Academy Award for it. Yes. And that was an independent short, uh, not a short film, an independent film. But that's the problem when you have these big actors and they're like, well, 20 million, 20 million, then nothing gets done. Right. except the studios and the, you know the production companies that have the money to give an act you know a big name mm -hmm. a million dollars just to read a script mm -hmm. there's people that have classes like that i've heard of them you know and they're true it's true it's all true mm -hmm.